What's going on guys, Victor here. It is day three in the Bahamas. We tried Chunk and Free Elephants this morning and we just, we didn't really get on a good school of them. So we're actually headed back home. We got to cross back over to the States today. On our way home, my buddy Mike, he's got some really good deep drop numbers and that's one of the good things about the Bahamas is the deep dropping is just phenomenal. You got yellow eyes, snow grouper, you got all sorts of just stuff that lives in really deep water. And what you normally do is they got a, an LP down there. They got an electric reel, but I'm going old school. I'm going all natural. I got the 50. I'm going manual. Probably going to regret this later because it is a lot of work. Reeling in in a thousand feet of water, 800 feet of water is not easy, but you can't just sit around. We're trying to feed families here. So let's see what we can pull up. All right. Oh, 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 we're, oh, baby, we on. Oh, dude, I got a stringer probably, don't I? Hold on, let him pile on there. All right. That did not take long. That was down there for all of two minutes at the most. Two of them. Woo! Oh. Yeah, the big one. Oh, got the big one. Yeah. The gap. Bro. No. Oh, get it, get it, get it. Nah, it was the queen. Hell yeah! Right, don't don't what was that little Check thing? that out. Nice queen. Nice, nice queen. queen. Leader shot. Because Mike's got a really heavy deep drop rig. I only got 80 pound on, so they might eat this better. So I just reeled my reel up and we don't want to have two down there at the same time to avoid tangles But Austin just dropped the LP again and honestly the manual was not that bad I thought it was gonna be a lot worse didn't you? I'm next it took a lot less time than I thought it was going to so I'm gonna do it good Bigger chance you're gonna get him getting So I dropped mine got the fish now Brooke just decided to get bold drop down two, and she's got him on She's probably got one or two on there. Fire already. How are they feeling? My arm's on fire. Guys, a lot of people will not do this. They refuse to manual. It's mainly an electric reel thing. If you don't have an electric reel, you could come out here and do it. All it is is this just giant chicken rig. You put some cup bait on there, drop it down, and you never know what you're gonna pull up. Cool. Not what you wanted. Huge down there. Grab that AJ. Get the AJ. Oh, giant. Nice one. Oh, that's the biggest yellow eye I've ever that's seen. That's a stud. Pull those things up. Austin, that's a slob. This thing's full grown, boy. Ready? Ready? Yeah. Christmas tree of fish. Austin, you want to go back? <laughs> yeah, I'll take us right back where we were. That's how you fill the box. A couple of those. Straight meat. Oh, did, it just, did it pop off? Yeah, oh, it's okay. So you got four. It's coming up. Don't worry, brother. All the guys are using the electric reel. We got the only one of the only two girls on the boat. Doing it manual style. Oh yeah, gotta get that arm pump somehow. And the other girls deep in the meat in the fish box organizing the fish. We haven't gotten skunked, we've gotten a fish every time. And on the last one, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if it was me or Austin, but we had a queen snapper float up. Cause that's what happens a lot of time. You, you might hook four or five in the beginning. And then as you're reeling it up, hooks come loose, they get off. And then if you guys ever watched my last deep drop video, there's this thing called barotrauma. When you guys see their eye bulging and their guts hanging out, fish have air bladders and they can't, they can't compensate for that pressure change as fast. So all their internal, all the gases in their internal organs expand. And that's why they have those bulging eyes and stuff. And they can't swim back down. They physically can't. So they just pop up to the surface. And that's not why sometimes we see them floating. Oh no, that's a bite. There they, oh bro. So it looks like we got a good amount on. Yeah. 
So I'm not reeling up. When you reach the bottom, you don't want to reel up right away because you got 800 feet or more. You want to let them load up on there. You know, you might hook one, another one swims by, senses it, they eat it. You want to kind of let them pile on there and not give them too much slack. Keep it kind of tight, but at the same time, give them a little bit of slack so that the way they can get hooked. All right, guys, this is the last drop of the day. Brooke is hooked up, reeling them in. And she got skunked on the snapper, but I'm rooting for her. I really think that she got some snapper on this time. And it looks like she might have two, possibly three, maybe four on. And she's done good. She's done the hand crank. Is this your second? This is your third time. Three times by herself. Got you got two. more than one. Deep dropping, time to head home. Guys, we are back from the Bahamas. This is the last video you guys will see from the trip. It's Sunday, we left on Friday, and these are two of the most prized fish you guys get in the Bahamas. You can only catch them deep dropping, so I'm talking 700, 800, 900, 1,000 foot plus. You know, what you guys saw us do with the manual rods, we got one electric, one manual. The manual is definitely not conventional, and most people don't use it, but we wanted to have two rods going, and it worked, it paid off. This right here is a yellow eye. As you guys see, it's got a yellow eye, and they are really beautiful fish cold water snapper flaky white firm fillets if you guys don't like fishy tasting fish this is probably the best fish you guys can get your hands on so I'm gonna go ahead and fillet this queen snapper up sweet looking fish very okay. firm big old eyeballs they live down there all those deep water fish swordfish uh, tunas that go real deep these deep drop fish all have big eyeballs because there's not a lot of light down there and they got to absorb as much of it as they possibly can. Oh yeah, this fish is real firm. Probably the firmest thing I've filleted all day. Go right over here around the rib cage. Don't go through that. You got to go right around it. Otherwise your life's going to be hell. Turn you down. Really nice white flaky meat. It probably looks a little dark right now because there's not a lot of light left, but this is some really good stuff. Big buck fish right here. So I will see you guys back in the kitchen. Thank you guys for watching these Bahamas videos, and this is going to be the last catch, clean, and cook from them. I'll see you guys there. Hope you guys enjoyed that last little bit of fishing action from our last day in the Bahamas. And if you guys are wondering what we do with all that fish, the fish you guys saw on the dock, well, we went with six people and that is a lot of fish for a lot of families. None of it goes to waste. You know, we consume it, we give away to friends and family. And that's one of the unique things about being able to go to the Bahamas is bringing back just a ton of fillets. So what you guys see me doing here is on the left hand side is the queen snapper, on the right is the uh, yellow wine. I just kind of wanted to do a little comparison to show you guys the difference in the fillets. The queen snapper is a lot more firm yellow eye, more flaky in nature. Both really good fish though. So what we're gonna be doing with this recipe is making a piccata style fish dish. And to uh, get that crispy exterior on my fish, I wanna go ahead and pat my fillets dry. And I'm gonna go ahead and just make a really simple, quick seasoned flour, which is just gonna be composed of all-purpose flour, garlic powder, black pepper, some paprika. That is really good stuff, by the way, that Hungarian paprika and pink Himalayan sea salt. Um, you know, kind of just season to taste, no exact measurements. You guys know what I do with my recipes. I'm trying to learn recipes 
and make them, not go by others. That's how you learn in the kitchen and that's how you, you know, really just develop a palette and that's how you develop skills in the kitchen. So go ahead and mix this flour up and we are going to go ahead and just coat our fillets in this. I did about half yellow eye snapper and half queen snapper for this recipe. Honestly did not notice any taste aside from the texture of the yellow eye versus the queen where the yellow eye would flake a little bit more. I prefer a more firm fish, but that's just me. Both were excellent in my opinion. So I'm also prepping up some garlic right here, putting into a little bowl, because this is gonna be used for uh, kind of like a little garlic pasta I got going on later, and some parsley for garnish, as well as to season our, uh, just our dish in uh, as a whole. So go ahead, chop up our parsley, and this is actually a very easy dish to make as well. It does not require, I don't think it requires too much skill. So olive oil in the pan, medium high heat, Go ahead and put our fillets of fish in there after they have been dredged in our flour and two to three minutes on each side, you know, depending on how hot you got the heat and look for that brown coating just like I got right there. That's the good stuff. Uh, and that flour kind of crisps up your fish, but not overwhelming, you know, not like a, a an actual fish batter. Go ahead, set those guys on the side. I'd like to stick mine in the microwave and so just they retain their heat. Capers delicious. If you guys don't like them, you can substitute something else or just not put them in. Bring my capers up to a little one, a minute and 30 seconds in the heat. Deglaze the pan with some wine and then add butter. This is a butter sauce, so it is going to be a little bit on the heavier side. If you wanted to do just purely olive oil, you could do that, but you can't go wrong with butter. So bring all that up to a nice blend and add my fish back into the sauce. Heat it thoroughly. Garnish it with some fresh parsley at the very end so you get that real fresh taste of the herb rather than the cooked nature of it. And like I told you guys, I wanted to do just kind of a simple garlic pasta. I went with bow ties, warmed up some butter and garlic, and I just mixed it thoroughly together with my bow tie, put it into this little plate, serving platter, and then put my fish right on top of my bow tie pasta because I want all those juices and flavors to just come together and I poured in all of my uh, white wine, caper, butter sauce right on top of the bow tie and the fish itself. And I know your mouth is watering right now. Thank you guys for watching. Finally, fish after one week. Finally, my son come back from Bahamas and finally he was fish again. Very good, very tasty with the capers. The sauce, very good. The fish, delicious. You see? Delicious. It's always, it's always a good taco. I love, love piccata. You can make it with chicken, you can make it with fish, but I like a nice thinner uh, filet fish like snapper for this because you get that crispy exterior and your fish doesn't get overcooked because you cook it really fast. Very, very easy recipe to make, to make. So if you guys like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and I'll be seeing all you guys, my land sharks, in that next video. Thank you.